In the last lecture, we created this form to create new products and add it in this product list. In this lecture, let's work on gathering the user input from this form. For that, we need to add event listeners on each of these input elements. And this event listener should listen to any change that happens on these input elements and react to that accordingly. Now we have already learned how we can do that. So on these input elements, we can go ahead and add an event listener like on input. Or we can also add on change event listener. Now the difference between on input and on change event listener is that on input will be called every time we make a keystroke in that input element. And basically same thing happens with this on change event as well. Here also this on change event listener will listen to every keystroke which we make inside the input element. But the difference here is that the on input can only be used on the input elements. But on change can also be used on elements other than input element. That means you can also use on change on a drop down list or any other form element which is not an input element. But on input can only be used on input elements. All right. Now to this on change event listener, we need to assign a code or a function which we want to execute whenever the change event happens on that input element. And since we want to assign some JavaScript code or a function here, we need to use a set of curly braces like this. Now inside these curly braces, we can write inline functions using anonymous function like this or we can also use arrow function so something like this and then inside these curly braces we can write the logic which we want to execute but we can also predefine our function and then we can assign that function name to this on change and that's what i'm going to do here instead of using this inline function i'm going to use a predefined function so Inside this product form component function, I'm going to create a new function. I'm going to call it name input handler. Okay. And I will assign this function to this on change event listener. Now again, here we don't need to use a set of parentheses because here we don't want to call this function. We want to assign a reference of this function to this on change event listener. So let's remove these parentheses here. So whenever the change event will happen on this input element, this function will be executed. So let's write some logic inside this function, which we want to execute whenever this change event happens. And for now, let's simply log a text in the console. And let's say some text entered. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And here we have added the event listener on this input element. So let me open developer console first. Let's clear everything here. And let's type something inside this input element, inside this text box. So if I type T, you will notice that that text has been logged here. If I type something else, again, that text has been logged here. If I type something again, again, that text has been logged here. So here, this on change event listener is listening to each keystroke which we are making inside this input element and for each keystroke it is executing this function this event handler function all right now typically whenever some event happens instead of logging a text in the console we want to get the value which the user has entered inside that text box right so let's see how we can do that now if you have knowledge in plain javascript then in plain javascript what we do is first we get access to the element on which we want to listen to an event using document.getElementById method. Here, the ID of this input element is name. So we can pass that ID here to this getElementById. And on that, we call add event listener. Okay, so this add event listener listens to a specific event on a given element. Here, this add event listener will listen to an event on a DOM element with this ID name. So that means 
on this DOM element. And the first argument of this method is the event which it should be listening to. Here we want to listen to change event. And then the second argument of this add event listener is a callback function. So here you can use this anonymous function or you can also use an arrow function. Now what happens is whenever this change event will happen on this input element, this callback function is going to receive that event object as its argument. Okay, so we can call that argument anything, but this argument, this parameter is going to store the event object which has occurred on the DOM element with this ID. That means on this input element. And we receive the same event object in case of React. So in case of React, for this on change listener, the event handler function is this name input handler function. That means this function. So whenever the change event will happen here on this input element, this function is going to receive the event object as its argument. So that means whenever the change event will happen, it is going to receive that event as its argument. So let's specify a name for that. All right. Now I'll remove this code. It was just for making you understand what is happening behind the scenes. And now let's go ahead and let's log this event object. All right, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let's refresh the page. Let me clear everything here. And let's type something in this text box. So if I type T, you will notice that an event has been logged here. And this event has a bunch of data. Now, the property which we are interested in here is this target property. And if I expand this target property, again, you will see a list of properties here. So if you want, you can go through these properties and learn about them. But if you scroll down to the bottom, there will be a property called value. And that value property stores the current value which we have entered inside that input field. So here what we can do is, here we can say event dot target, and this target object has this value property. And this value is going to store the current value in that input field. Let's see that. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And let's clear everything here. And let me type something here. So if I type T, you will notice that T has been logged here. If I type E, TE has been logged here. If I type S, TES has been logged here. If I type T, then TEST has been logged here. So for every keystroke, this change event listener is calling this name input handler function. So for each keystroke, it is logging the current value in this input field. Okay. Now remember that this target object points to the DOM element on which the event has occurred. So in this example, this target object is pointing to this input element in the DOM. And this value property holds the current value of this input field at the point of time this event has occurred, this change event has occurred. And in this way, we can read the value for other elements as well. So now what we can do is we can add this on change event listener on other input elements as well. And then we can create event handler functions for these input elements. And then we can assign it to this on change event listener. So I will copy this function. I'll create it four more times. And I'm going to rename these functions. So I'm going to call this second one price input handler. I'm going to call this third one description input handler. I'm going to call this one availability input handler. And I'm going to call the last one image input handler. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's add this on change event on these other input elements. So let me copy this one. And after this placeholder, let's add on change event listener. And here we want to assign price input handler to this on change event listener. In the same way, let's add it here. And here we want to assign description input handler to this on change event listener. Then let's also add this on change event listener on this input element on this checkbox. 
and here we want to assign this availability input handler so let me pass that here and finally on this input element also let's assign this on change event listener and to this i want to assign this image input handler all right with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and let's verify whether these input handlers are working or not so i'll refresh the page let me clear everything here let's type something so you can see for this first input element this event handler is working let's try it in the price so let me enter 12.99 so that value has been logged here so for this input element also it is working let's try it with description so maybe this is test description so you can see that for each keystroke that event handler function is getting called and it is logging the current value in this input field then if i turn it on you will notice that on has been logged here in the same way i also want to choose an image for the product so if i click on this choose file this file explorer window has opened from here i can select an image and when i click on this open button you will notice that the path of that image has been logged here so in this lecture we learned how to capture the value from the form using event listeners and event handler functions now the question is what do we want to do with these values because we certainly don't want to simply log it in the console right so what we want here is we want to store it somewhere in the memory so that later when the form is submitted we can use it and we can display it in this product list so let's see how we can do that in the next lecture